Welcome back to Mental Math. This limit looks incredibly intimidating. We've got a factorial, an nth root, and a division by n, all going to infinity. But its solution reveals a stunning connection between discrete sums and continuous integrals. Our challenge is to evaluate this limit as n approaches infinity. Let's call the value of this limit l. The main difficulty here is the nth root and the factorial. To handle these, we can use a powerful technique, logarithms. Logarithms are perfect for bringing exponents down and turning products into sums. First, let's rewrite the nth root as a fractional exponent, 1 over n. Now, let's take the natural logarithm of both sides. This will allow us to simplify things. We get the natural log of L equals the natural log of the entire limit. Since the natural logarithm is continuous, we can swap the order and bring the limit outside. This gives us the limit of the natural log of the expression, which is much easier to work with. We'll now apply two key logarithm properties. First, the log of a quotient becomes the difference of the logs. Second, the log of a power lets us bring the exponent down in front. First, let's apply the quotient rule to the term inside our limit. This separates the expression into the difference of two logarithms. Next, we apply the power rule to the first term to bring the 1 over an exponent down. The expression now simplifies to 1 over n times the natural log of n factorial minus the natural log of n. Now we need to deal with the natural log of n factorial. By definition, n factorial is the product of all integers from 1 to n. The logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithms. This property is the key to unlocking the next step. So the natural log of n factorial becomes a summation of the natural log of k from k equals 1 to n. Now, Let's substitute this sum back into our limit expression. This is where the transition to calculus happens. We now have this form. Our goal is to make it look like a Riemann sum, which requires a term of the form k over n inside the function. To get there, we need to cleverly rewrite the natural log of n term so it can be combined with the first summation. We can multiply the natural log of n by 1 in the form of n divided by n. Then we rearrange the terms. Now in times the natural log of n is just the sum of the natural log of n with itself, n times. This can be written as a summation from k equals 1 to n. Therefore, we can replace the natural log of n with this equivalent summation form. This is the key manipulation. Substituting this back gives us the difference of two summations. Now that both terms have a common factor of 1 over n and are summations over the same index, we can combine them. Factoring out 1 over n gives us the sum of the difference of the logs. Using our log property for quotients, again, the difference of logs is the log of the quotient. And there it is. This is the precise definition of a definite integral as the limit of a Riemann sum. A Riemann sum approximates the area under a curve. As the number of rectangles n approaches infinity, this sum becomes the exact area, which is the definite integral. In our case, the interval is from 0 to 1. In our expression, the function is the natural log of x, and the interval is from 0 to 1. So our limit equals this definite integral. Now, we must solve this improper integral. To solve the integral of the natural log of x, we'll use integration by parts. This technique is useful when we have an integrand that's a product of two functions. We choose u to be the natural log of x, since its derivative is simpler, and dv to be dx. Then, we differentiate u to get du, and integrate d your v to get v. Plugging these into the integration by parts formula gives us x times the natural log of x, 
minus the integral of x times 1 over x. The x terms cancel, leaving us with the integral of 1. The integral of 1 is just x. So the indefinite integral of the natural log of x is x times the natural log of x minus x. Now we evaluate this from 0 to 1. This is an improper integral because the natural log of x is undefined at 0. We plug in the upper limit 1, and for the lower limit, we must take the limit as a variable. a approaches 0 from the right. At x equals 1, the natural log of 1 is 0, so the first term evaluates to negative 1. The tricky part is the limit of a times the natural log of a. This is an indeterminate form of 0 times negative infinity. To solve this, we use L'Hopital's rule, which allows us to take the derivatives of the numerator and denominator when we have an indeterminate fractional form. First, we rewrite the product as a quotient, which now has the indeterminate form of negative infinity over infinity. Now, we apply L'Hopital's rule by differentiating the numerator and the denominator. The derivative of the natural log of a is 1 over a, and the derivative of 1 over a is negative 1 over a squared. This fraction simplifies to negative a, and as a approaches 0, the limit is 0. So the entire integral evaluates to negative 1. We have the value of the integral. Let's put everything back together to find our original limit, L. We established that the natural log of L equals the integral we just solved. So the natural log of L equals negative 1. To find L, we just need to solve this equation by exponentiating both sides using base E. E to the power of the natural log of L is simply L by definition of the logarithm. And so, after that incredible journey through logarithms and calculus, we find that the value of our original limit is 1 over e. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this journey from discrete sums to continuous integrals, please like and subscribe for more mental math content.